Today we're going to be looking at a video called China is throwing away fields of electric cars, letting them rot. Let's see what this is all about. This is a field of over 10,000 Neta V Chinese EV cars that are rotting away. And this man. They look pretty nice just off the rip. They don't look that bad. I see plastic on the seats. So I'm assuming they're brand new. And has just exclaimed that these BYD cars, all 2021 models, have less than 31 miles on them. And just like that field of 10,000 cars, they all have license plates on them. They're all fully registered and they've been put away to rot. Yes, all of these cars have been left to rot. Why on earth is China throwing away entire fields of electric cars? By now, we've all heard that China's EV sales are outpacing the rest of the world. You'll see the headlines that say, ah, China is now the leader in EV sales and Tesla's got to watch out and all this other nonsense. Well, guess what? It's true. The numbers are true. But what you're not taking into consideration is that China is the land of shortcuts and facades. And all of these cars that you're seeing in this field, well, they're counted in those numbers. Let me explain to you what's going on. Uh, should be around. Uh -huh. uh. Yes, I love my extra wallet. This is really nice. I never expected this. And uh, so I can chuck that big wallet of mine now. This is For Father's Day, self. So falling off is just part of dirt bike riding. We all know it. You're riding in a field in the woods, a hidden log, a a hole in the ground, something surprises you and all of a sudden you're staring at the sky. Well, luckily, dirt bikes are built tough. They're designed to fall and take a beating over and over again and still keep going. Just like extra wallets. In cars, I ride bikes I by my side. Packed with tech, best time on their website. Not relevant. Go to shopping today at check. You'll love it. And the BYDs and the... To the show. You see the Netta V's and the BYD's and the bigger brands that you see huge amounts of them just parked out to rot. Well, you see, that's because they need the numbers. In order to get subsidies from the government, in order to put out the sales figures that they've sold more than Tesla and that they're in leading in EV production and EV sales, they need to have these fake sales. So BYD themselves will register them and put them on the market and then claim that they've been sold. And then of course they've got all those excess cars and they just stick them in a field and... You can make history tomorrow. But there's a bigger problem. There are even more car graveyards. And that has to do with a stupid investment scheme. Let me explain. In China, very often you get these fly-by-night investment schemes. Someone comes up with a good idea like hmm, bicycle sharing, for instance. And guess what? People jump on the bandwagon. They raise a bunch of investment capital. They start a company. We saw it go absolutely crazy with the shared bicycle schemes. We covered this on the China show where we showed these mountains of bicycles that had been discarded because the companies knew that if they pump these bikes out, they'd keep getting investment. So they just kept pumping them out even when it wasn't financially viable because like a Ponzi scheme, you just keep getting your investment money in and all of these bike companies pretty much shut down except for two. And a lot of the people that started these bike companies. What in the world? So in China, they're just building these cars and electric bikes, bicycles so that you can get investment money, but you don't actually sell them to anybody. That's weird. Is that true? What, what's this guy's source? He's ran away with the investment money, never to be seen again. The bicycle sharing schemes kind of came to an end in late 2018. And then suddenly, and because the bicycle sharing investment scheme had now disappeared, people stepped in with a new investment scheme for shared vehicles. And this time it was for electric cars. Now, there's this fantastic video, which I'm going to... Are these fake? I mean, are these images 
valid? Are these legit images that we're looking at? Link below in the description, you can see it in the background here. But there is a documentary filmmaker who went and took drone footage of the shared bikes and he made this uh, video called No Place to Place in 2018, where he showed all of these massive mountains of the shared bike failures. But he then went in 2019 to film the fields of abandoned electric vehicles. So this is no place to place too. And what you're seeing are these fields of shared cars. You see the idea like shared bicycles would be that you have an app and if you need a car, you can look in your app and see, oh, there's a shared car nearby, a shared electric vehicle. Um, and you go and you unlock it with your app and you can drive to your destination. This just goes further to my point that there's way more pollution associated with electric, electric cars than there are with your regular Ford, Chevy, Toyota, gas cars. There's way more pollution associated with EVs. Nation and then lock it again. It's actually a very nice idea. It's not a bad idea at all, but of course, because it's all a money grab and it's a ridiculous scheme and a Ponzi scheme type situation in China, they just pump these things out without doing proper market research, without actually seeing if it was viable or not. And so the end result is fields and fields of thousands of hundreds of thousands of abandoned vehicles that are now going to rot. Now, this is where it gets insidious. These cars are electric vehicles. And that means they have batteries in them. So not only have you created a lot of waste by developing cars that are not going to be used and that are going to be left to rot, I mean, steel and glass and liquids and chemicals and all the rest that goes into it, but the batteries, everybody knows that these electric batteries that are used in electric vehicles are incredibly complicated and require a lot of very dangerous mining and chemical processes to create. There are human rights uh, atrocities attached to making these batteries, if you want to look into it, child labor, slave labor, that kind of thing. But the detriment to the earth in mining all of these chemicals and all of the, the materials needed to create these electric vehicle batteries is just insane. So yeah, the blood of little children in the Congo associated with electric vehicles is far and away, it's way, way more than anything associated with your regular gasoline and diesel vehicles. So now you've created all of this uh, environmental damage to make these cars, and then you just let them rot in a field. And of course, now they're going to create even more environmental damage because they're going to sit there for however long with all of these chemicals and batteries in them and all the rest of it and uh, they're going to pollute the environment further. So it's like a double whammy. Not only have you damaged the environment making them, but now you're damaging the environment by discarding them. And this is where China tricks everyone. You see, you hear about their great uh, green initiatives, this being one of them. Oh, look, China's really pushing forward in renewable energy and electric cars. And if you just read headlines and you uh, look at the numbers, etc., you would think China's doing a very good job but what you're not seeing is the fact that China is actually destroying the earth at a rate never before seen. So you have to look past the facade and people still don't seem to get this. China is an opaque country. They block all of this information from the rest of the world. You would not be able to just see this. If a company does something like this in the West, you bet your bottom dollar there's going to be a lot of eyes on it. A lot of big news outlets will cover this. There will be heads will roll. People will have to uh, reply to this. The companies would have to pay some kind of a, uh, a, a fine for damaging the environment or for doing bad things like this, like an oil spill or something like that. We know that there are ways to deal with these things, but because we don't see these things in China, nothing gets done. These massive fields of electric cars just sit there rotting. China's green technology initiatives that you keep hearing about are mostly bullshit and a smokescreen to hide the fact that they're doing all sorts of environmental crimes. And remember, it's all about turning a profit. It's not about saving the environment or, or anything like that. It's a propaganda push and it's a money grab. They want your investment. They'll say, hey, look, invest in China, invest in these green initiatives. You feel good, you go and invest your money. It's being used for wasteful projects like this that really damage the earth. So think twice before investing in China. And if you want to find out more about what's going on in China, I'm talking about up-to-date, down-to-the-wire news 
events and everything else in between, come and join me for The China Show on Friday. This is my live show that I do with uh, my business partner, Lawa86, where we cover what's new in China, the soft power hour, the Wu Maos, the haters, the everything. Yeah, this is Serpenta. I've never heard of Serpenta, but man, that's pretty dark. That's pretty dark. Why, why just make all these cars if you're gonna let them sit in a field and rot? And I, you know, I think he put it pretty well. You damage the environment, you damage the world making these cars, and then even more damage done by just letting them sit because all the, all the chemicals in the batteries are gonna leak out eventually. Yeah, don't buy, <laughs> don't buy electric vehicles. Uh, the more I learn about EVs, whether it's electric bicycles or electric scooters or electric cars, man, it's, it's a lot darker. It's a lot more pollution and pain associated with EVs in comparison to, uh, I drive a 1994 Corolla. It's the cockroach of the car world. It's, it comes in many different varieties and it will never die. In 20 years, I'll still be driving my 1994 Corolla. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Keep an eye up the hill, guys.